Hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Guys, brave the cold and the snow to be out here this morning. It's great to be with you and um, spend some time together. Looking forward to it today. And I'm excited. Anybody excited about remembering Jesus' death and celebrating his uh, resurrection? Anybody excited about that? It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to have a great time together. So, hey, uh, we're going to jump right into the message uh, this morning. And uh, let's welcome those that are watching uh, across the street in Softer Sunday and those online. Can we give them a hand and then we'll dive in. So how many of you have ever needed a fresh start? Anybody ever need one? Anybody ever wake up and say, can I just go back to bed and do this all over again? You ever feel like that before? Just need a fresh start. We're in this series called Fresh Start. In golf, a fresh start is called a mulligan. And, uh, you know, generally, guys I play golf with, they'll give you one mulligan per round. I've been in some golf tournaments. It's, it's just a do-over where you could buy mulligans. And, it, and if I had enough money, I would buy one for every hole. Uh, just because I have a hard time golfing. Matter of fact, I was golfing with a guy from Helena First named Larry Holman. This was a couple of years ago. And... Uh, I don't know, the second or third hole, he teed off, and then I teed off, and I had a really terrible shot. And, and Larry was just standing there looking at me. He goes, what should I do? How do you want me to respond when you hit a shot like that? And I said, just be quiet, Larry, just like that. He said, this is going to be a very quiet round of golf. <laughs> and he, had a, he, knew, he knew what was going on. You know, some of you, like, if you play video games, some of you have played video games with people who hit the reset button. Every time they don't like the way the game's going, just reset, reset, reset. It gets so upsetting. Um, Amy and I, we've had, um, we've had discussions before. Anybody here ever have marital discussions? The, I hear people chuckling. You know what I'm talking about. I um, Sometimes I'd come home from work, maybe, or she would come home from work. I'd walk into the house. You know, you just kind of have intensity about you, whatever happened during the day. And we start a conversation, and she's like, we need to do this all over. Go back outside and walk back in again. It works. Try it. Like, we just start the conversation all over again. I don't have hair now, but I've also had, uh, I've had more than one haircut where I needed a do-over. Anybody ever need a do-over and a haircut before? <laughs> yeah, I saw some hands going up, so... The, my last haircut at home when I was a kid, my parents used to cut my hair. My last home haircut was right before for a field trip. I don't know, I was in seventh grade, I think, sixth, seventh grade. And it was horrible. It was so bad. I was just crying and crying. And it was so bad. My mom said, let's pray be together. Maybe none of your classmates will notice your haircut. <laughs> and then she gave me a ball cap because it was an outdoor kind of event put the ball cap on, came home. Nobody remembered my haircut. Last haircut I had at home. And uh, last last time I ever let my dad at me. And then um, when Amy and I were young and first married, we were trying to save money, just had a, I had a $7 an hour job. We had a baby, we were living in an apartment. And I saw these clippers you could get and they came with a, a, a video that you could watch and you could cut your own hair. And you just plug in the video, watch how to do it. And so I had Amy, I said, Amy, we're going to do this. It's going to save us a lot of money. We watched a video together, and then she did her first attempt at a haircut. I went to work the next day, and someone said, who cut your hair? It's all crooked. So then I didn't want to tell my wife, so I went home, and I tried to fix it in the mirror, and it was even worse. Then she saw it was worse, so she did it again. We went back and forth, and we finally just shaved all my hair off. It's my first bald experience. It was over Memorial Weekend. And I kid you not, this is the truth. Labor Day weekend, that same summer, I finally quit wearing a ball cap to work. And when I took my ball cap off on Labor Day weekend, someone said, did you get a haircut? I mean, it was that, like, it was that messed up. Do-overs. Some people have physical hearts that need a do-over. Did you know that 3,700 people every year in the United States get a heart transplant? In the last 10 years, 31,283 283 people have had heart transplants in the last 10 years. It's incredible the number of heart transplants. Their heart stops functioning properly. And you know the sad part of this is that someone has to die who has a good heart in order for someone to live who has a bad heart, right? And there's, I was just reading about this this week. It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of debate over a thing called cellular memory. 
So like uh, one of the interesting things, you can read all kinds of articles. Some people say it's not real. Other people say it's definitely real. But people who get heart transplants often develop desires or want things that they never wanted before. For instance, there's this one guy got a heart transplant. He never liked onion rings, and all of a sudden he loved onion rings. Every time he'd go out, he'd order onion rings, only to find out the donor, heart donor, also loved onion rings. He got the guy's heart and the cellular, you know, memory in the heart. I read about another guy who, uh, he received a donor's heart, and he fell in love with the donor's wife. They got married. Isn't that kind of weird? You're like, where is this message going? Uh, Let let me ask you a question. If you, let's say, if you were a heart donor, what would be the cellular memory of your heart? What would it be that's transferred to another person? Because long before we learned to do heart transplants, how many of you know God was doing heart transplants? Not the physical heart kind of transplant, but the Bible talks a lot about God giving people a new heart. It's a new mind and way of thinking. It's a new will and desire. It's a new set of emotions. It's a heart transplant of mind, will, and emotions because God knows this. You can't have a changed life without a changed heart. It's impossible. You can try as hard as you want to turn your life around, but I'm telling you, if you don't have a changed heart on the inside, you can try, 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 but your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions are always gonna take you back a different direction than maybe what you even wanna go. To have a changed life, you have to have a changed heart. This is why a long time ago, back in the book of Ezekiel, God made this promise to some people who had hard hearts, they had bad hearts. Look at this promise, look what God said. He said, I will give them an undivided Heart, I'll put a new spirit or a new attitude within them. I'll remove from them their heart of stone, hard heart. I'll give them a heart of flesh, and then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people, and I will be their God. This is the end game for God. This is what God wants. He wants to give people a new heart. He wants a relationship. He wants to be your God, and he wants you to be his people. That's, that's what he wants for us. And so these people had hearts of stone. How many of you have ever had just a stone cold heart or anybody know someone with one, right? And, and God's like, hey, these people, no matter what I say to them, no matter what I do, they're just against me. Their heart's cold to me. They have this long history of ignoring God. And here's the thing. If I were God, like if I ran into this, I, I might just let people die. Like, Go ahead, just die, right? How many of you are grateful that God doesn't let us die? Instead of looking for new people, he makes people new. Are you grateful for that? Is he tired of you and go, you know, I'm just gonna quit on this person. Like, he doesn't just go find somebody else. He just makes us new people. He gives us a new heart. And this is what I wanna talk about for a little while today because God offers hard-hearted people a fresh start and a new heart. He does it still today. He wants to do this in our hearts and in our lives today. And someone had to die with a good heart in order for us with a bad heart to have a new heart. How many of you know on Good Friday this week, we're gonna remember Jesus who came 2,000 years ago with a good heart and he died upon a cross so he could give us his heart and we could have his cellular memory in our thoughts, in our will, in our emotions And he took our stone cold heart, took it to the grave, shook it off, three days later he rose to new life. How many are grateful for that this morning? Isn't that awesome? That's what we remember on Good Friday. We become what the Bible calls new creations. I've been living as a new creation for 50 plus years. And I wanna share this morning just a few things because if you put your faith in Christ, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, You're also a new creation. And I wanna share with you two things that I wish someone would have told me that no one ever told me. And then I wanna share with you one thing that someone told me that I'm forever grateful for. And so I wanna kind of dive in, just talk about being a, a new creation this morning. So here's the first truth, lesson on living as a new creation. Number one, you won't always feel like a new creation. How many of you can attest to this? Anybody here, you put your faith in Jesus, but you don't, anybody ever feel like, well, I know the Bible says this is what I am, but I don't really feel like a new creation. You ever feel like that before? 
And, and so um, I know that I often don't feel like it. Sometimes I still ignore what God wants. Matter of fact, I say sometimes, lots of times I ignore what God wants. Lots of days I feel like the same old Paul. Anybody relate to that? I'm just like, this is never gonna change. This is never gonna happen. It's been 50 years. And yet look at what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, will you say that with me, in Christ? Okay, you're gonna see this in almost every verse I show you. If anyone, which means everyone, turn to your neighbor and say he's talking to you. Just tell him, he's talking to you. If anyone, which means everyone, anyone in Christ, they are a new creation. The new creation has come. The old is gone, and the new is here. So if we base our, we, we around here, we base our lives on God's word. If your feelings tell you one thing, but God's word tells you something different, who's right? Tell me who's right. God's right, right? Not my feelings, but God is right. And so if God says it, it's a fact, Jack. And this is how it is. Like you're a new creation. You have a new heart. But we don't always feel that way. By the way, can I just point this out? It, it says you're a new creation. It doesn't say you're a perfect creation. And I think this is important for us because a lot of us don't feel like a new creation because we, don't, we know that we're not a perfect creation. It doesn't say anything about being perfect. Matter of fact, this is why junior high students, they go to camp, they have an incredible experience with God around the altar. God really touches their life, moves in their life. And then they go to the snack shack and act like junior high goofballs. You know, like they're the same, right? This is why. This is why Pastor Goodman is still a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He's a new creation, but he's not a perfect creation, right? Yeah, he's probably watching next door. I saw a sign uh, back in uh, the town I was from in Michigan. It, it was, the sign just cracked me up. It said, new used tires. You ever feel like that? Like you, God says you're new, but you're like, I sure do feel old and used, right? I don't feel like a new creation. But we all know that our feelings can mislead us, right? They really can. And you don't want to live by your feelings. You know, feelings are legitimate, but they're not facts, you know, your feelings are going to keep telling you you're the same old person, but that's not what God says. God says you're a new creation. You have a new heart. And there are a lot of things that make us feel like we're not a new creation, like our history. Like we know like the sins we've committed, the wrongs we've done, and we become a new creation in Christ, and we carry some of that baggage with us. The old things, we remember the things we've done. Our hurts, you know, we think, how in the world can I be a new creation when I have the same old hurts in my life? We have our habits. We're new, but we still, some of us still have bad habits. And we see other people who put their faith in Jesus and just suddenly they shake off some of their bad habits and we're still struggling with our bad habits. Some people who come to Christ still struggle with alcoholism. Some people who put their faith in Jesus still struggle with drug addiction. Some people who put their faith in Jesus still want to go on shopping sprees. They got 50 pairs of shoes and they need just one more pair, right? Like we have these things in our life. Anybody here still say stupid things since you become a believer in Jesus? No, not at all, right? Like we, we, we all have these habits and then we have these desires. Like why do I still want the same old thing in my life when I put my faith in Jesus? I thought I was a new creation. Why am I having bad thoughts? But here's what God says. God says you're forgiven. God says you're free. God says you're healed. And how many of you know you can trust your feelings or you can trust God and we trust God, amen? This is important for us to understand. I wanna give you an example. Here we go. Let's just take forgiveness for example. How many of you know that in Jesus you're forgiven for your sins? Right, okay, about half of you. I was looking over here. I saw you guys out of the corner. Anybody over here feel forgiven? You know you're forgiven? Okay, look at, look at this verse. Paul writes, he says, in him, Jesus, there it is again, we have redemption through his blood. We have the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that awesome? Our sins are forgiven in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Some of you are like, well, you don't know how bad my sin is. Well, you don't know how rich God's grace is. And no matter how high your sin rises, how many of you know God's grace rises above it? And you are forgiven in Christ when you put your faith in him. But sometimes our feelings tell us that we're not forgiven or we don't feel forgiven. And this is kind of what, we, condemnation is one of those things. Like we feel condemned. 
We just never feel good about ourselves. We never really feel totally forgiven by God. Look what Paul says. One more verse here. He says, therefore, there is now just a little bit of condemnation in Jesus. Is that what he says? Oh, there's some people feel some condemnation in Jesus. Is that what he says? There is therefore now how much? No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation, not a little, not some. There's none. Now look up here for just a minute. If you're watching online, just listen to what. So one of the things I find that there are some Christians who've lived in condemnation so long before Jesus, who lived unforgiven so long that they're uncomfortable with living a non-condemned life. They're used to living feeling condemned. They're used to living feeling unforgiven. And some of them don't like a sermon unless it makes them squirm and feel bad about themselves. If I don't somehow feel condemned, it's not really good preaching. Like if I don't somehow just feel like, man, something's wrong with me, they're uncomfortable with it. It's really true. Like I've met a lot of people who've been through abusive situations. Really interesting thing occurs. Some of them don't feel comfortable in a healthy relationship. They only feel comfortable in an abusive relationship. And you say, well, that's weird. Like that, that's not true. It's totally true. And a lot of us as Christ followers, we, we want to feel somehow comfortable like in a situation where like, like I, I want to feel a little bit guilty. And God's like, hey, I don't want you to feel guilty. I want you to feel forgiven. You are forgiven. So don't let your feelings override the truth of your new creation, okay? So number one, you're a new creation, but you won't always feel like it. Number two, we're going to get into this. You're a new creation, but you still have an earthly nature. How many of you want to testify to your spouse that they have an earthly nature still? Like, uh, like uh, you're for, you're, you're, you are a new creation, but you still have an earthly nature. Let's talk about this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. I wish someone would, would have taught me this a long time ago. It says, put to death. Everybody say, something's got to die. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you and say, something's got to die. Not you, but something's got to die, all right? Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. How many think this is a list of really bad things, right? It's like these have to be put to death. Now look up here. Paul is writing to people who are new creations in Christ. He's writing to people who have put their faith in Jesus, who have been forgiven for their sins. And he says to them, you have to put to death Things that belong to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Some of you are going, what? Christians actually struggle with these things? Yep. This is why the Apostle Paul said, why do I always do the things I don't want to do? And why do I have a hard time doing the things that I do want to do? Can anyone relate to that? And so I know some people are like, well, Pastor Paul, you never really struggle with any of those things. Wrong. All right, right? Like, like, like this is why Paul says, hey, these have to be put to death. Like these have to go by the wayside and these things in your life can make you feel like you're not a new creation. You gotta put them to death. You gotta kill them. It's your old life. Something's gotta die. Now look at, Paul, uh, Paul goes on, verse six and seven, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. One day God's gonna clean up all this junk on the earth. He said, you used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. So there's things that have come and that have changed in our lives. And there's some of the big stuff's gone, but how many of you know uh, there's other stuff that has to go from our life too? Three or four of you. Like there's other stuff. Let, Let me show you, Paul goes on to say this, and here we go, we'll get into it. But now, you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, Malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Can I just tell you something? As new creatures in Christ, no matter how long you live, you will always have stuff to deal with until you get to heaven. How many are ready to get to heaven now? You're always going to have stuff. There's always going to be more. You have an earthly nature. Matter of fact, um, the other day I prayed a really dumb prayer. Anybody here ever pray a dumb prayer before? 
I, I, I was reading my Bible, and uh, this is probably a couple weeks ago. I was reading my Bible. It was, my Bible's talking about, you know, you need to love God with your heart. Just listen for his voice. And I prayed this prayer. I just said, God, like if there's anything holding me back from loving you, like I couldn't think of anything. I thought it was a safe prayer. If there's anything inside of me that's just like interfering with our relationship, like I'm, this is, I'm good. Like I'm, not, I'm thinking about it. I have nothing, you know. Would you just show me what it is? And I kid you not, like a week later, something happened in my life and all of a sudden this big, ugly, nasty, not fun thing is staring me in the face and I was like, I wish I hadn't prayed that prayer. (laughs) Right? I even told my wife, I said, I prayed the stupidest prayer a week ago. I wish I hadn't prayed this prayer. And I told her, like, this is going on. How many of you know, as long as we're alive, we're gonna have to deal with this stuff in our life? Right? Matter of fact, it's time for some of us Like as Christ followers, some of us have had anger issues, fits of rage, malice. We use our mouth to tear people down instead of building them up. We've got all kinds of things going on. We like to tell lies to each other, like like in cover-ups. And we have these things in our life. And right now, now you must rid yourself. It's time to deal with some of this stuff in our life right now. You're a new creation, but you still have the old man with you. Well, one of the things that helped me the most with this was uh, uh, my youth pastor when I was a kid. He uh, worked at Ford Motor Company, and before he came to Christ, he, he swore he cussed like a Ford Motor Company guy, okay? Like, I mean, just, and when he came to Christ, he's like, I don't want to cuss anymore. I, 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 want, I want this to stop. And every time you go to work, he said, I'd fail, I'd fail, I'd fail. I just keep cussing, keep cussing, you keep cussing. I keep praying about it, I was feeling so bad. And then one day he was taking a hammer, hitting an anvil, and he hit his finger instead of the, what he was trying to strike. And he grabbed his finger, he's hopping around. And then all of a sudden he realized he wasn't cussing and he started laughing, hopping around, holding his finger. Victory, right? Like, It's just a little out of time. This is how it works in our life. But it says, do not lie to each other for you've taken off its old practices. We gotta stop lying to each other. We gotta stop telling each other that, oh, I'm good, hiding our stuff. How many of you know we all have stuff? Okay, I'm not sure you're convinced, but the Bible says you have stuff. Okay, and we have to just be honest and real. It's, It's actually gonna help each other to overcome it. And then Paul says this, verse 10, and put on the new self, which is being renewed. Get this, your new self isn't your complete self. It's being renewed, right? So it's not perfectly done. Put on the new self, being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. Take off the old, put on the new. Say, so how do you do that? How do you take off the old and put on the new? How, do you, how does this happen? You gotta do things you don't feel like doing. Okay, that's how this works in our life. If you tell a lie, make yourself go back and tell the truth. It's painful, trust me. It's embarrassing, right? If you steal, start being generous. Instead of taking, start giving. Do the opposite of what you feel like doing. And don't do both simultaneously. When I was was a youth pastor back in Warren, Michigan, all these churches started getting broken into. Someone was breaking into churches, stealing their offerings, and the police were trying to track them down. Uh, it never happened at our church, but it happened at other churches. And one day, uh, one of the guys from our church called uh, my lead pastor and said, hey, I'm in jail, could you come see me? And the lead pastor went to jail to see him, and he said, Pastor, I'm here. He goes, I gotta tell you, I've been, I've been stealing from other churches. I've been stealing their offerings, and they caught me, but don't worry, I've always tithed to our church. Anyway, some of you, that'll settle in. You can't do both at the same time. Look what Jesus said. This is how you take things off and you put them on. Look what Jesus said. He said, but those of you who are listening, love your, how many think that's the opposite of what you want to do right there? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. How many think that's the opposite of what you want to do? Jesus said, bless those who, that's the opposite of what you want to do. Pray for those who mistreat you. That's the Okay, let's go through this one more time. I know it's early. It's the opposite, right? 
This is how Jesus says you overcome this in your life. You take off the old, you put on the new. You do the exact opposite of what you feel. This is so important. You're a new creation, but you still have an earthly nature. Your, self, your new self's being renewed. Take off the anger, put on the peace. Take off the rage, put on the joy. Take off the slander and speak life to one another. This past year, my daughter-in-law dressed four of my grandkids up in Ohio State gear. I'm a Michigan fan, okay? Michigan and Ohio State play each other every year. I get video of my grandkids dressed in Ohio State gear. All of them. My wife thought it was cute. And I was like, you can go over their house too. Like, I don't, like, we're not. And then oh, Michigan beat Ohio State. Then Michigan won the national championship. And guess what we're going to do? Out with the old, in with the new. This year, they're wearing Michigan national championship gear, Okay. We're going to take the other stuff off and burn it. Okay, we're never going to mention it again. That's what you do. Out with the old, in with the new. This is so important. Here's the last piece I want to share with you. So these two things, I wish someone would have told me, Paul, you're a new creation, but you're not always going to feel like it. But you really are. And I wish someone would have told me you're a new creation, but you're still going to have to deal with your old nature. Here's something that someone told me, and I'm forever grateful. And it's this. A new heart, it's a gift from God. A new heart is a gift from God. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 11. Look what it says. He says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and I will give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. Look up here for just a minute. You cannot get a new heart from a self-help shelf. You're not going to find salvation or transformation. A new heart is a gift from God. You can't catch a new heart from being around other people who have a new heart. You need it to be a gift from God in your own life, right? You're not going to catch it like you catch COVID. Other people can inspire you, but they cannot transform you. You know, you might turn over a new leaf, but you can't turn over a new life. Only God can give that to you. And that's what he wants to do in all of our lives. God can go and get new people or he can make old people new. And I'm so grateful that this is what he does. He takes messed up, sinful, broken people and with broken hearts, messed up hearts and says, let me give you my heart, what I have for you. And let me take you that old, dirty heart of yours and get rid of it. This is why the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. This is what God wants. And the Apostle Paul echoes what Ezekiel says. God wants you reconciled. He wants you to be his people. Verse 21. That's why God did this with Jesus. He made him who had no sin, a perfect heart, a heart that loved his father, a heart for the father, no sin. He was sinless. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is called a heart transplant. Jesus came to the cross 2,000 years ago and said, give me your heart, your evil, wicked, broken heart. I'll take that. And let me, get, let me give you my healthy heart, give you a fresh start and a new life. How many of you are grateful that Jesus did this for us? Amen. It's a gift from God though. You can't earn it or deserve it. You just have to believe it and you have to receive it no matter what your feelings tell you. Would you bow your head with me today? And we're going to close our time together and Let's live in a fresh way as new creations this week. As we come to Good Friday and remember what Jesus did for us, we come to Easter to celebrate the resurrection. Let's live by facts from God and not by our feelings. Let's live forgiven. Let's live healed. Let's live free in him. Maybe you need to kill something this week. Maybe there's something that has to die. Maybe it's anger, maybe it's malice, maybe it's slander, maybe it's filthy words coming from your mouth. It's like, this has got to die in my life. Maybe it's sexual immorality or impurity, whatever it might be, greed. Something's got to die this week. You don't have to do it alone. You're a new creation in Christ. Jesus 
is with you to help you and strengthen you. Some of you have been longtime Christians. When's the last time you killed something? When's the last time you put off the old and put on the new? Instead of being angry today, I'm gonna be joyful today. Instead of slandering or using my mouth to bring people down, I'm gonna only use my mouth to build people up today. Whatever it might be, and then just accept God's gift into your life. Maybe you're here and you've never accepted, you've never gotten on God's transplant list. You're like, I know I need a new heart. I know I need a new mind. I know I need a new, a new thoughts. I need new desires. I need, I need forgiveness. I need cleansing. With every head bowed, if that's you, just put your faith in Jesus that 2,000 years ago, he came to give you his heart make you a new creation, forgive you for the past. Heal your hurts and your brokenness so that it does it, it's not something that pu- pu- pushes you down but lifts you up. He's here to change your life. If you could just simply reach out, you can even pray right now. Just It's really not about, about even about a prayer. It's just about putting your faith in Jesus, that Jesus, I put my faith in you right now that you make me a new person, that you give me a new heart, that you forgive my sin, my past, and that you bring healing and peace into my life. I wanna follow you, Jesus. Do that right now. Heavenly Father, we pray for those that may be praying that simple prayer and putting their faith in you. And we pray that you'd help each of us this week, God, to live as new creations before you that you'd help us to live in the truth of your word. Help us to be real about what's going on in our life, that you're making us new. You're renewing us day by day. God, I pray for anyone that's discouraged or frustrated or feels like they can't do it, that we don't base where we're at on our feelings, but on the reality of your word. And that God, you would continue to transform our lives this week. We just thank you for this. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you can stand with me this morning. You know, as we follow Jesus in our lives, sometimes we think that the new creation thing happens just once. And we accept Jesus and the salvation that he gives, but it's something we step in every day. My flesh must die. I must look more like Christ. And so as you leave this place, there are things that we need to put down. There are things we need to put to death. And if I'm an angry person or I have lust in my life or I have all these things, it's not about shame or guilt, it's about this. I don't wanna be like this anymore. I wanna be a person of love, of life, of hope, of peace. And that means today I'm going to choose to follow Jesus. And if you're in this place today and you've never made that choice, we wanna walk beside you in this journey. So if you text follow to the number 94,000, we're gonna get you some information on what it is to actually be a Christ follower. It's not complicated. It's about accepting the gift of grace from Jesus and following him. And so if you wanna do that, click on that number, send that link. If you look at the QR code, you can even click there and say, find out more about Jesus. We can help you through that process. The band is going to play you guys out. You're dismissed. Have a great Sunday and drive safe.